Yo, Vanilla, kick it one time, boy. Yo, VIP. Let's kick it. Hello, Chemistry 30. This is our fourth lesson in the equilibrium unit. This is ice tables and equilibrium concentrations. In this lesson, we will explore ice tables, how to calculate equilibrium concentrations using ice tables, and work through three examples. Ice tables are used to find the concentration of reactants and products at equilibrium. Remember, for a chemical reaction to be in equilibrium, it must be in a closed system. ICE is an acronym where I represents the initial concentrations of chemical species when the reaction starts. C represents change in concentration for the chemical species as the system approaches equilibrium. And finally, E represents the equilibrium concentrations of all chemical species when the reaction is at equilibrium. It's important to note that the initial concentration of the products will always be equal to zero unless stated otherwise. And don't forget that concentration is measured in moles per liter. Consider the following reaction. H2 plus I2 is forming an equilibrium reaction with HI. The initial concentrations of the reactants and products have been recorded and the equilibrium concentration of I2 has been recorded. If we know the initial concentration and equilibrium concentration of one species, we can then calculate the change of that specific chemical species. The change in concentration for I2 is negative 1.32 moles per liter. We can then use stoichiometry to calculate the change of every other species in the chemical equation. Stoichiometry uses the molar ratio in the chemical equation. Notice how the change for H2 is the same because H2 and I2 are at a one-to-one -one ratio, where the change in concentration of HI is double, plus 2.64, because it's at a 2 to 1 molar ratio. It's important to note that change in concentration can be positive or negative. If the reactants have a negative concentration change, then the products will have a positive concentration change. This can also be the opposite. Finally, once we have the change of all chemical species in the equation, we can calculate the equilibrium concentrations for all chemical species. Here we are just taking the initial concentration, minusing or adding the change in concentration to get our final equilibrium concentrations. It's important to note that equilibrium concentrations will always be positive. Only change in concentration can be negative. Example number one. A 1.0 liter container contained 0 0.750 moles of CO gas and 0 0.275 moles of H2O gas. Equilibrium was reached according to this equation. At equilibrium, 0.25 moles of CO2 gas were present. Calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the other reactants and products. Pause the video and attempt this example. It's important to note that the values of each chemical species were provided in moles. 
but ice tables require concentration, moles per liter. So we must divide the moles by one liter. We can create an ice table and we have the initial concentrations of all chemical species. Remember that the initial concentrations of the products are zero. We were also given the equilibrium concentration of CO2 gas, which was 0 0.25 moles per liter. We can now find the change of one chemical species. The change of CO2 gas was plus 0 0.25 moles per liter. We can then use stoichiometry to find the change of all other chemical species. Below is an example of using stoichiometry to find the change in concentration of H2 gas. All chemical species have a coefficient of one in front of them. Therefore, the molar ratio in this chemical equation is all one to one. The change in concentration of the products is plus 0 0.25 moles per liter. Therefore, the change in concentration of the reactants is minus 0 0.25 moles per liter. Now we can find the equilibrium concentrations of each chemical species by taking our initial concentrations and minusing or adding the change in concentration. Example number two. At a certain temperature, 3.0 moles of F2 gas and 2.0 moles of I2 gas are introduced into a 10.0 liter container. At equilibrium, the concentration of I4 F2 gas is 0 0.020 moles per liter. Calculate the change in the concentration of F2 gas. Pause the video and attempt this example. The value of each of our reactants was given in moles. Remember in ice tables, our values have to be in moles per liter. So we have to take our moles of each reactant and divide it by 10 liters before putting our values into the ice table. By doing so, we have the initial concentrations of both reactants and the initial concentration of both products is zero. We were also given the equilibrium concentration of the product I4F2 gas. Since we have an initial and equilibrium concentration for I4F2, we can find the change in concentration of that chemical species. We can then use stoichiometry to find the change in concentration of all of the remaining species in the chemical equation. These are examples of how to use stoichiometry to calculate the change of the remaining species. As a result, by performing stoichiometry and using a six to one molar ratio, we can find the change in concentration of F2 gas, which was 0 0.21 moles per liter. Don't forget that value is also negative, so the change is a negative concentration. That is because the products had a positive change. Therefore, the reactants must have a negative change in concentration. Example number three. A 5.0 liter vessel was filled with 6.0 moles of SO2 gas, 2.5 moles of NO2 gas, and 1.0 moles of SO3 gas. After equilibrium was established, 3.0 moles of SO3 gas were found. What is the concentration of SO2 gas at equilibrium? Pause the video and attempt this example. Again, our values for each chemical species were provided in moles. And to put these into an ice table, we must convert them to concentration. Therefore, we have to divide each mole value by five liters. We can then determine the initial concentrations of all reactants and products. The initial concentration of SO3 gas was given in the question, which is 0.20 moles per liter. 
and there was no value given for NO gas, therefore we must assume that its initial concentration is zero. At equilibrium, we have a concentration of SO3 gas of 0 0.60 moles per liter. We can then find the change in concentration of SO3 gas, which is plus 0 0.40. We can then use stoichiometry to find the change in concentration of all other chemical species. Remember, if the products are positive, then the reactants have to be negative. Finally, we can take our initial concentrations of each species and minus or plus the change to determine our equilibrium concentrations. Our equilibrium concentration of SO2 gas is 0 0.80 moles per liter. Moving forward, we will explore the equilibrium constant Kc.